Well then folks, we now have some more steps, of course, to do in the Diagostini build selection. This one is part 13, first of all, and we'll move through the next shipment. So first of all, shipment number 13 is going to look pretty familiar because it is the other door. So of course, we've already done this once, so chances are I'll probably edit this down quite a bit. And as you can see, I'm filming in a, a different location as well, so the sound might be different. So bear with me there. So this is the next section, which is the aforementioned door. There's our screws. So there is the window section. All of our screws to one side. And we take these out. So the door latch, small spring, and the spring retainer as well. So we'll place those to one side for just a minute. And of course, we have our trusty screwdriver as usual. The window itself is there. We'll open up our screws in just a second. So we have all of this. Move those aside as well. We have all of these sections. So step one is take the window and place, place the window into the opening on the inside face of the co-driver door. So in order to do this, we will need to, of course, retrieve this section of the left-hand door which we've already placed this light into, of course, last time. And then step one is place the window into this section. Um, place it into the opening on the inside face of the code of the door. Position the holes at the bottom over the matching holes in the door. Now I should just remember all of this, but I still want to follow the, the steps because it was a little while ago now. So with those three screwed in, the window is now in place, so now we can move on to the next section, which is place the opening mechanism, which is this little one here, into the recess on the door's interior face. So into this little slot here. And then if we flip that around, place that through there, like so. Then if we flip over our page, Step four, place the opening mechanism spring onto the rear part of the opening mechanism, of course. Then step five, place the opening mechanism plate over the end. So that's, of course, this little retainer here. Place the plate over the end of the opening mechanism up against the spring, holding the assembly in place. Secure the opening mechanism to the plate with two FD04 screws. Now that I've managed to get that underneath, we can flip that one back over just to make it a little bit easier. It's not the record, whoops. Now that I've placed that one under there, so move the retainer back a little bit, pop that underneath, and then I can place the second screw in. That's not the recommended way from the instructions. So I can't say that you should do that, but that's the method that I used. And it just made it a little bit less awkward. Although any section with the smaller screws is pretty much always awkward anyway, <laughs> no matter what. And then we have our working door mechanism once again. So our next stage now is to get our hinge. Let's place that down for a second. Flip the door over, grab our hinge, and then place the hinge into here. Now this, of course, on the first time was one that I had to take off and redo because I tightened it up a little bit too much. So if we put that down for now, we will need, according to step seven, this plate. Mount the hinge plate over the hinge so the two holes in the hinge fit onto the two posts in the door. Secure the plate with an FD01 screw. And of course, make sure it's not overly tight because you do still need the hinge to be able to move freely. It's a fine art to get in that just about right. I think that should be about right, but we can always we can always loosen it later if necessary. So that is done. Stage complete. So that is now our completed door for the most part. And now, of course, with that in mind, we can now move on to step 14. So we now have section 14, which, as we can see from the instructions at the back, is the inner door section for the piece which we've just completed here. We can place that down. And here are the actual pieces, which I've already opened. So we can pop those out and we have our three panels. So step one, retrieve the co-driver door assembly from the previous stage. Of course, we've done that. 
Step two, place the door roof panel, which is this one, into place, inserting the four pins into their corresponding holes in the door, which of course is just about here. Then pop those in, of course, until you hear the click. That one is on. Uh, step two is done into 12A. Step three, press both parts together into place. That is done. So if we move those, then we can flip the page. So step four, store the interior door compartments and cover to one side for the next stage. And then that's complete. So keep those for later on. We've done the door section and you can, you know, no prizes for guessing what the next part's going to be. So that's it for step number 14. Now on to 15. And so we now have step number 15. I have the parts over here already opened once again. So if we flip over to the instructional pages, naturally it is the inside of the door, of course. So we'll doubtless be bringing over what we've just done, as well as those couple of interior panels. So if we em empty out what we've got here, we have our inner door section, of course, all pretty familiar because we've already done this once before. FD01s over to the side. Okay, so we have our door, we have the screws, step one, as well as of course our screwdriver as always. Recover the cove driver door, yep, we've already done that, with the interior door compartment and its cover. Step two, position the interior door compartment over the opening in the door panel. So we need our small piece here and the actual panel here. Ensure that the pin on the door engages fully with the lower tab. And then step three is to secure the door compartment into the door with an FP01 screw, of course. So that one is going to be popped into here, like so. So that one has clicked into place, as you can hear. And now we can grab our screws. Uh, secure it with a screw. So is that just one screw by the look of things? It is indeed. And there you go, that is now in place. So if we flip over the page, and then step five is engage the interior with the door and the roof panel. Check that both the window and door are positioned in their housings and do not interfere. So I recall this one being the place where last time I wanted to make sure that I got it right. Well, of course, but um, so if we slot that over the, so if I slot that over the handle first, over here we should then be able to snap that into place yes we can so the next section secure the interior panel with two fd zero ones so fd zero ones are here there we go i think that's tight enough then step seven press the door compartment cover into position over which of course is this little one here, handily suits the shape. Pop that one in there, and there we go. With the loudest of cracks, that is now in, and stage complete. So another door is now finished. We have our functioning hinge. We have our functioning door lever, or handle, I should say. So that is that for that stage, and that joins the other completed door, both looking good. So now, of course, that is it for step 15. Now let's move on to 60. Now, for step 16, this is a pretty simple one because it's one large piece, the largest piece of this selection, in fact, which is the whole door panel, or not the floor panel, I should say, not the door panel, to place our seats on. But if you check in issue number 16, it's a pretty simple one because there's just the description, and then it just says in step 16, 1, the central floor panel will be used in a later stage, so keep it to one side until then. So this one, not really anything to do, as we've seen a couple of times before. So we're done with that one, and we can move on to the next stage. And speak of the devil, we now, of course, have our next stage, which is the aforementioned addition of this floor pan. So if we put that onto one side, step 17, we go to whoops, the back of our instructions. We have, of course, pieces over here. Major piece, and then a couple of screws, 
and a small piece here. So if we set those to one side with, of course, our screwdriver as always, there is that. So first up, we have our small silver piece. Insert the connection plate into the corresponding space in the right rear engine compartment floor panel. So here is our panel. Let's see if we can line that up. That looks to be lined up there. And that looks to me to be placed, whoops. This looks to me to be placed in that orientation. And there we go, that one's slotted in. Then step two, press the plate lightly into the rear end. Yep, we've done that. Step three, turn the assembly over and secure the underside with a screw. So if we grab one of our screws, just enough to hold it in place. Seems good enough to me. And if we flip over our page, we have retrieve the central floor panel. Yes, sir, Bob, there it is. Step five, align the two pins on the underside of the central floor panel with the two corresponding holes in the right rear engine compartment. Press the two pieces together. So if we flip this one, which, which orientation do we have? That looks to me like that is the correct way. So if we then grab this, that should be facing away by the looks of things. And that looks to me to be connecting just about there, I think, if I'm correct. Yes, ah, there we go. Slots in quite nicely. Yep, that seems pretty good to me. And then stage complete. So there we have it again. That's another one complete. And that completes it for this batch of parts. So until next month, of course, I'll see you in another episode. But for now, we are done. So thanks for joining me once again, and I'll see you next time.